This ex-warlock who used to shop in the same witchcraft store as Solange Knowles, who is Beyonce's biological sister, gives a powerful and bone-chilling testimony. You guys have to hear this. This is one of the most spirit-filled testimonies I've ever heard. Check this out. From him, different things. Solange Knowles walks in, Beyonce's sister, into that little, it's called the Botanica, the little witchcraft store. Solange Knowles, Beyonce's sister, walks in with her boyfriend. And I'm like, Maya, is this a dream? And I'm, is this Solange Knowles? He's like, yeah, she comes here regularly. We do rituals for her and her family. And I'm just like, what? Like the nose, you, like, yeah, man, this is real. And she's buying product and, and paying for rituals. And I'm like, this might be my call. This this might be my purpose. This might be it. So as I'm, I'm, I'm learning all these things, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to Haiti and I'm going to Puerto Rico. They told me I had to go to a cemetery and I had to be in, in a cemetery for two weeks in each island. And I had to like literally do dances and rituals. And, and they said they were going to like literally torture you, like whip you. And you got to go through the process in order to become a warlock. And I was like, all right, well, this is what I'm supposed to do. This encounter um, was a barber, so I had to get a new barber. I'm in a new city, and um, I, it was recommended to, me, recommended to me through somebody to go to this barber named Paul, right? Go figure. So I go to this barber shop, and he's giving me a cut first time, and he's playing Christian rap, right? And I'm like, man, what is this? He's like, it's Christian rap. Oh, okay, you ever heard about Nipsey Hussle? And he's like, yeah, I heard about him, man, but I don't listen to that crap. Like, I, it's, it's whack to me. And I'm like, what? Nipsey? Nipsey, come on, man. He's 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 deep, man. Like he's he, he like he's woke. He's like, man, nah. I listen to, I listen to G Christian music, man. I'm a, I'm I love Jesus and and I listen to Christian rap. And I was trying to convince him the entire time, trying to convince him that it's not Christianity. I was telling him about the voodoo I was doing, like what I believed in, and all this. And he just stayed strong on his faith. And he would just always be like, nah, man, it's Jesus. Nah, man. It's, and I'd be like, come on, put on some nip. He'd be like, nah. He was actually getting kind of frustrated, but he stayed. Patient and the spirit cut my hair up showed me so much love I blessed him and I just was like man this you know this older black guy you know who looked hip he had the clothes like he, he didn't look like the average Christian was so strong in his faith and I was like okay that's a that's just a coincidence like they, 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 that's whatever okay so a small white lady named um Sharon and she just was so spirit filled I was telling her everything I was doing and she was just like it's Jesus like just letting you know there is power in Christ like you can cast out demons you can heal the sick you can speak in tongues which is you know Mark 16 talks about that and I'm just like what is this lady talking about and why does she keep praying for me and when she prays for me why do I keep feeling something I kept feeling something and I'm like what is this and as she would pray for me on the phone on speaker I would literally see shadows in my house moving so I was uh, this is when it got real I'm like wait hold up is it Christianity no way it can't be because I was raised Catholic so my whole perception or my perspective on Christianity, on Jesus, was the Catholic Church. And I was like, no, 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 this can't be true. This is crazy, but, but, I, but, but there's power. So the guy Richard kept texting me, like I said. And I was like, all right, I'm going to go to this guy's church. If Christianity is real, I'm going to go. And he was um, part of a, pow a powerful church out in um, West Palm. It's more of like a worship family church. And I went out there and um, when I walked in. I just felt the atmosphere. And this guy was so excited. When I came, he was there early, like, you're here. You finally made it. All right, come on. Come on. Come with me. We're going to get front row seats. I'm and I'm just like, man, come on, bro. Like, and I'm in bed. I'm like putting my head down. Like, okay, where am I at? Like, okay, I've never been in a Christian church. This doesn't look like the Catholic church. And I'm walking in with my girl and we sit in the front and I look up on the stage and guess who's, who's the lead worshiper playing the guitar? Paul from the barbershop. And I'm like, Richard, do you know that guy? He's like, nah. He's our lead worshiper. I don't know him, though. What? What? And I'm like, that's the... No, no way. And I, like, I'm just, like, freaked out at this point. Like, like, what are the chances? It's super coincidental. No way. And they played Reckless Love. I got wrecked. That's the first time I felt the presence of God is when they, they played Reckless Love, how he leaves the 99 for the one. Because as they were singing, I felt the presence of God as they were worshiping. And I looked over at Richard, and he just pointed at me and said, that's you. You're the one. And I was just, I fell down. I'm crying. The pastors actually came over. They laid hands on me and they prayed for me. And I'm crying. And that was like my first encounter that led me to start really seeking Jesus. And I'm like, okay. So I call up the lady Sharon. I'm like, Sharon, what do I do? She's like, get a Bible. So I order a Bible on Amazon. It comes in. 
And I'm like, all right, I'm going to read this Bible. And I'm reading the book of Romans and it convicted me. It convicted me so much that it was, it was unbearable. And halfway through the book of Romans, I'll never forget it, December 1st, 2019, halfway through the book of Romans, I finally came to the revelation that Jesus Christ is the highest power. Like he's Lord, right? So I was like, he's the highest power. That's what it, that's what it essentially means. It's like he's the Lord. He's the highest power. Hosanna the highest. So I was just like, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. And when I said it out of my mouth and I really believed it in my heart, and I didn't say it like Romans 10, 9 exactly. I said it with the intention in my heart that he's really the highest power and I meant it. I got encountered by Jesus in my apartment. All I remember is a light came and I got knocked to the ground. That same light that helped me out with the sleep paralysis. That same voice that helped me out in New York when I was going to commit suicide. That same voice that told me I'm going to show you now in Greece. Knocked me down to the ground. This is in real life. I wasn't in a trance. I wasn't in a vision. This is like in the physical. I got literally knocked down to the ground. Like it was, it was like the light was so, it was too strong. Like I just, I couldn't, like I just got, I got curled up in the ball and I was shaking and I was manifesting demons. I was crying profusely, coughing up. And I just, I felt like things were coming out of me. And then as things started coming out of me, I began to speak in a dialect. Like I kind of said it by in tongues. And I'm like, why am I doing this? But it felt so like from my belly, I felt like I had to do it. And it felt like, like liberating in a way. And I'm speaking in tongues and I just got, and I stopped. This is like 20 minutes later. And it's like, I came back to reality. Like I'm just like, and I felt the most overwhelming peace that I've never had. It was finally, it came, the purpose of life. It came, everything I was looking for. It was like, it just, that's it. It wasn't knowledge. It was my, my spirit and my soul. I just knew it's Jesus. And I just was like, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. And I just can't, I couldn't stop saying it's Jesus. I had the power of the Holy Spirit in me, his love in me, his peace in me, his joy, everything in me. Like now I had fulfillment. I felt fulfilled. I mean, just wow. That was absolutely powerful. You can just feel the presence of God all over that testimony. Now, a lot of you guys may or may not know who this person is, but today he's a big time minister who is all over social media and the Lord is using him in ministry very powerfully. There is just so much I can point out in this testimony. But one thing I want you guys to recognize is how he said he used to shop in the same witchcraft store as Solange Knowles. And Solange Knowles would come in there and buy witchcraft items to do rituals for her and her family. So this is a big time confirmation of what Beyonce and her family is involved in. The woman and her family, including the mother, is indeed a witch. Which I and many other influencers whose eyes are open have have been telling you guys for a long time but back to the more important point and that is the way that the lord orchestrated things so divinely in this man's life to bring him to christ he put so many signs in his path and he just divinely arranged things you know that were just too amazing to be coincidence it just had to be the hand of god and how important it is for us to stand firm on our faith when we run into people who are non-believers, when we run into people who might be involved in, in, in witchcraft or from other religions or whatever it is, for our example to be so firm that the Lord can use us to impact a life just like this man's life was impacted by people who were just firm in their faith and stood on their faith without compromise and how powerful those examples can be in somebody's life and all those examples you know all of those people along the way played a part into the moment where he entered into that church where the holy spirit seized him suddenly and he knew that he was in the presence of god and god became so real to him and the Lord delivered him from all of those demons that he invited in his life. And what were the words that he continued to say? It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. He knew the truth was Jesus. He knew the one and only living God was Jesus. But where did he hear that before he began to utter it out of his mouth? He heard it from those people who the Lord put in his path to tell him who the true God was. When he was in the barber shop with the guy cutting his hair and he's talking about all this stuff he's involved in. What did that guy keep telling him? Man, it's Jesus. It's about Jesus. What did the woman keep telling him when he would, would be on the phone with her? It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And when the time came, those seeds were sown. 
right? Those seeds were watered through true believers, faithful believers, real believers in Christ. And when the time came, all of those seeds that were sown and all the watering that was done and all those different people that the Lord put in his path, when the moment came, then Jesus could seize him and just allow all of it to open up and give him this revelation that Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the only path to freedom. And look at what this man is doing today. He is being used now to touch the, the lives and the souls of millions of people. And the Lord uses him mightily. So you guys definitely go and check him out. And big shout out to you, brother. Just want to let you know if you see this, man, your testimony touched me, man. It, You know, I love you, brother, and I don't even know you. But just your love for Jesus and just hearing that story, it touched me, brother. So, you know, you continue to do what you're doing for the kingdom of God. I pray the Lord blesses you tremendously as you remain faithful to him and takes you higher and deeper into his love, his truth, and his power. So, amen, y'all. I pray that this message bless you guys. Shalom, and I'll see you next time.